All right, here it is. The 78 K10 with K20 axles on it. Step side. I'll start with the exterior here. The truck is complete now. It's got four inch rear leaf springs, four inch lift, no blocks. I do have spacers on it only to even out the front tire with the rear tire. Otherwise the rear tire would be so inward from the body it would be kind of hideous. Other than that, that's the only reason why I have spacers. Um, it's a 14 bolt rear axle, corporate rear end, uh, 410 ratio, full spool in the rear, no spider gears, no posi, no locker. Um, I do have the extended brake line kit from Rough Country. Um, four inch rear springs, like I said, six inch front springs. Now I did that, and no, it doesn't sit squatted. It sits pretty nose heavy, actually. I only did that because with the four inch front springs, it was pretty sagged out, especially with the 454 up there. They're only half ton springs. Um, it still does ride kind of rough, but for a square body, I could definitely live with it. I redid both of these axles. This is a Dana 44 big hub. Came off of a 73, also a 410 ratio. Um, I redid both of these axles. I took them all apart, cleaned them out. This one's got a full spool as well. Um, and with the locker in the front, it makes it real easy to turn. The lockout hubs, I mean. So I don't have to worry about the full sp spool in the front. The full spool in the rear, it kind of chirps around tight uh, corners, tight corners and stuff, but it's not that bad. Dual stabilizers. The kit came with the truck, actually. When the guy was going to do the same thing I, was, I did to the truck, that kit came with the truck, so I utilized it really cool kit I like the look um, I went with a DIY crossover steering kit from eBay um, I know that's kind of hideous right now I need to get a, a machined washer made and I need to replace this but there's nothing I can do um, the reason I had to put such a gaudy washer on there was this beveled edge in here was not tightening up properly so this was becoming loose and it wasn't the beveled edge was not um, joining well with the pitman arm here so that's a, a temporary fix for now this winter that's going to be fixed that'll be one of the projects that'll feature on the channel um, and I did have to put the two-wheel drive steering gear on here I found that from a buddy those are not easy to come by so just remember that like I said rough country brake line extension kit that's actually a really nice kit and a lot of people don't like rough country but it is what it is it is a square body. Um, as far as everything else, um, the front drive shaft, I did have to have it extended, but they just built me a new shaft, which is okay. Um, exhaust, two and a half to Super 10 Flowmasters with tailpipes, axle dumps, you could say. Um, the frame and everything was painted. Everything was painted like that. Um, the body does need painting, but I'm not too worried about that. It's got paint. That's all that matters to me. Um, I did all new brake lines. I did a stainless brake line kit from LMC. You can see the proportioning valve there. Um, uh, these shocks came with the 6-inch kit because it did have the 6-inch kit on there. That's how I got the 6-inch springs. But I was having an issue with... U-joints, it was too much of an angle on the top U-joint and I would take U-joints out like 50 miles. So then I put the four inch in the rear and that helped. And then the six inch back in the front to level the truck out. Um, these wheels and tires I found on Facebook Marketplace, 35 inch tires, old school style turbine wheels. Someday I do plan on painting this part black like they originally were. And then leaving this powder coated gray, it is a, it is a powder coat. Um, now that I have the roll bar in here and it's painted black, I, I feel like it'd be a real good match. This roll bar I also found on Marketplace. In fact, believe it or not, the guy I bought those rims from had the roll bar sitting in his garage and that's how I acquired that. Um, the floor, obviously this is not factory and none of the step sides from factory had a metal floor. 
we had these bed rails from a kit. We got a wood bed kit from off, off the internet, off eBay. It had stainless center strips and stainless edge strips. But these edge strips from factory are spot welded on. So they are a major pain in the butt to take off. So we had the side strips because we reused the old strips from the truck we put the wood bed in. And these carriage bolts here that you see every foot or so from factory are also captured within the edge railing. So we had these leftover strips and I had an idea and I had talked to my father and I said, well, let's find a way to put a diamond plate flooring in here. So as what he had come up with, so we had realized that we need diamond plate flooring is only so thick right so we need to make up the spacing somehow so we did run a sheet of it's not really like plywood it's it's more of a denser wood i i would say um underneath and we did the measurements i believe this is like uh what would this be like three eighths plywood and then a quarter inch thick piece of diamond plate um we had the local machine shop or metal shop or whatever you want to call it cut the diamond plate the correct size we had it all measured and everything then we used the side rails in the existing locations because i had cut off the spot welds that was a long process and it it paid off because the diamond plate flooring does look really really nice in here but i don't know if i'd do it again the wiring there is for the casey lights um there's really no no better spot i could mount that you could see the relays there the casey lights we got with a different truck when we purchased a different truck they're about as old school as they can get and I had an extra mounting location up there so I put a uh, antenna on it kind of cool they do work everything works um we'll touch on the interior later these emblems I found off the internet I had to paint them and see they're not perfect but that's fine and as long as we're talking on accessories here LMC you can probably see they are the LED ones front and rear um, this is also new from LMC, but these are the analog lights because if you run LED on the side markers and everything all the way around, your flasher will not have enough voltage to draw to flash. It'll flash fast. Um, so that's why I left those the same. And they do look really nice. They're nice and bright because they're nice and new. Delta headlights I found off the internet. One of our other trucks had them. And I really, really, really like them only because when you're going down the road, it looks like you're driving a newer vehicle but when you're coming at the vehicle they're not bright white and blinding like some of the newer vehicles are which is really cool um i did put a new fuel tank on it just here's some more shots of, of the uh undercoating that i did in the fenders i know it's a little dirty but it's a driver um these step sides are really known to have rocks come from the inside and dent the bed um so I did the undercoating, that helped a lot. I don't see any dents from the inside out, which is nice. You can see these tires do take rocks. They do hold rocks. So um, it is throwing rocks at them fenders and they're doing pretty well. Billet grill from a different truck, but I wanted to keep the aftermarket modifications to this truck era correct. Hence why it's got a bug guard on it and the KC lights. This bug guard is an old school bug guard. I know I'm going to get some crap for this, but it come off a of Ford. It came off my uncle's Ford. Back in the day, he built a Ford. A real big jacked up Ford. It was in the world of wheels a couple times. It was in uh, four wheel drive magazines. Um, he changed the name multiple times. And that's the name he had on the truck was Brute. And this is hand painted. He hand painted that on there. Really, really cool and nostalgia. So I left it on there. And, um, I think that's pretty much it for the exterior. Like I said, it needs some paint work. I'm not too concerned. It's the paint is there. Paint jobs are extremely expensive right now. Um, I decided to do all my spend all my money on the frame and the stuff underneath the stuff that you really can't do later on. But the only thing you can do later on is a paint job. Yeah, you got to take your your lights and everything back off, but it's a lot easier to take your lights and your trim pieces and everything else off than it is to take the body and stuff back off the frame and have the frame redone. So that's why I did the frame right away. And that's why I have wait, waited to do the body. Um, now I'll work on the inside here. LMC door panels. 
This is all from LMC, LMC window cranks, LMC window felts, new window felts and everything. This steering wheel, I got this off of eBay with an adapter to go to the um, six bolt pattern here. Um, this seat is an LMC recover. There's factory foam underneath here, factory seat, but we the, we got the kit that has the hog ring pliers and stuff in it. So you can re-hog ring it to the seat, pull the old one off. Um, but the only thing that's left from when I got this truck will be the Speedo. That's still left in here. Um, it's a really old school retro one. It's not, not in perfect shape, you know, but it's, it's old. It works. It looks cool. So I use that. Um, part of the camera here. And then um, this dash pad is from a, it's an OEM dash pad. It was tan. I used vinyl paint. I followed the instructions and I gave it like five or six coats. Um, the vinyl paint is holding up great, actually. It looks amazing. Uh, the dash pad was brown, and as you can see, there's no reminiscent of brown in there. So that strip from LMC, I repainted the dash with some rattle can paint. Um, this is my switch panel for my lights. I do eventually plan on redoing this. It's not the greatest design. It was just the design that I used to make it work. This is for my electric fans, and this is for the choke. It is a manual choke carburetor. I put a square radio in here. I'm eventually going to change that, you know. I say the project's done, as in it's complete, but it's never done in, in the builder's eyes, you know. I'm going to replace the bezel, and then I want to put in a retro sound stereo unit. Um, I have one of those in one of my other trucks. It's really nice to have the retro sound stereo unit. Um, this square radio does nice, but it fades in and out every once in a while. I got the gauges. I do have a USB port for charging phones. That's really nice when you're going to a show. Um want to change the pedals someday because they're a little war but that's still from the truck when i first got it new carpet from lmc new, new boots all the way around um this bezel is from lmc the bezels from lmc the heater controls from lmc i had to find a new gauge cluster because someone had took in the original one and they'd cut these all out and they had made um they had put their gauges up there but see with these square bodies, the connector that plugs into the back, as I was saying, these square body clusters, if you do not have an original style cluster, you cannot um, use a different cluster. It's gotta be, say this one had idiot lights, then you gotta put another one in that has idiot lights. Now that was extremely hard to find one for a 1978 style with the older um, numbers to have idiot lights only. We stumbled across one at an Iola car show. Um, so that's what I had to do to get that. Um, visors found off the internet. Seat belts, LMC seat belts. Um, the replacement kit. I also got their LMC kick panels. Speakers. Do plan on replacing those. I have blue interior lights. Really cool. The license plate over there. We bought this truck from Minnesota. And when you buy a vehicle from Minnesota, you have to give the purchaser the license plates. And um, since I went from a kick panel that had a pull-out lever for air induction, you know, like AC on non-AC vehicles, you would call it, I had to patch a hole. So I used that. I pop riveted it, sealed it really nice with silicone, and then I used the license plates. Um, uh, so that's the interior. I'm really happy with the interior. Now I'll show you under the hood. So under the hood here, um, you can see some of the brake lines from LMC. This is a 454 big block. Uh, I think it would be what you'd consider the RV cam. It's the next step up from stock. Um, new aluminum radiator with shroud and fans. Do need to upgrade the fans they could use to push a little more um there are also spark, spark plug wires edelbrock abs2 carburetor 800 cfm original style chrome valve covers but they're not oem ones they are um, aftermarkets headers for a square body came with the motor um rpm air gap intake fuel regulator to regulate my 
fuel pressures, make sure they're all up to spec. It does have a mechanical pump on it. Relocated the alternator with an alternator bracket relocated kit from eBay in order to get a better angle on the belts. As you can see, I did run a double belt pulley system. So both the top belts go around the water pump. I was having an issue keeping this thing cool and it was slipping the alternator, especially with the KC lights. So I went with that re relocator that allowed me to not worry, have to worry about belts or alternator slipping at all. Everything works good. Um, other than that, what you see is what it is. Uh, the inner fenders, I had repainted. The tops of them I had repainted. The person I got the truck from had the inner fenders painted white. And I thought it was kind of cool. You know, something a little different. So I had them repainted white. Um, I really liked that. So they're white. And that's pretty much it under the hood. Um, this drivetrain in this truck, again, is a 454. SM465 205 transfer case and then three quarter ton axles from a 73 truck, uh, 410 ratio, uh, 35 inch tires, full spool, front and rear, lockouts in the front. Other than that, it is pretty much done. I would consider it complete. I got this video out of the way so I don't have to touch on it anymore because you will see me working on it. I will work on it. There will be project videos to come. There's some stuff I got to do to this thing. Um, so yeah, there'll be other trucks that I will work on in the upcoming future here. I'll be working on the other white step side, um, but that'll be for a different video. So here, I'll start it up now so you guys can hear it. And then that'll wrap this video up. It's a little cold yet. I don't think I'll have to put on the choke. No, I won't. Sounds pretty good. Runs really good. Just, just about 75 pounds oil pressure. It's got a high volume oil oil pump in it. Here's a little rev. She's pretty spicy. I am doing this video in my neighborhood, so I don't want to get her too spicy. Smooth, runs smooth, runs great. There she be. That was ready. So there she be. 78. The truck I started it all. The truck that got me in it. My first build. My dream. My everything. There she be. Hope you guys enjoy. There will be another co video coming up here in a little while. The other white step side, the LS swap step side. I'll touch on that truck a little bit because I know that truck is new, never been seen on the channel. I'll touch on that truck and then uh, I'll show you what I got going on with that one. We got a little project with that one. But here she be, she's all done.